Hi, my name is Joe Deaker. I'm a professor of music at Cornell College. Um, last year, um, I was one of the first year seminar teachers, uh, actually team teaching with Professor Jai Shinata. And as, uh, during that uh, class last year, I gave a presentation on Nat Natasha Trethewey's Graveyard Blues poem and how it related to blues music. And I guess I must have done okay with that because some of my colleagues this year asked if I could um, create a Zoom video with that information for you all. So I'm glad to do that. I will apologize in advance if my uh, moving around Zoom gets a little sketchy. My Zoom skills are uh, somewhat limited and my piano playing is rudimentary, uh, but uh, we'll get through this and uh, I think you'll experience some interesting ideas and, and uh, get a better appreciation for this wonderful piece of poetry. So let me share my screen and we'll get started here. And we'll put this in presentation mode. And I'll get myself out of the way here. So, all right, so uh, hopefully you've all read the poem. Um, and if you have the book, you might wanna have it open in front of you right now. There is a, uh, a great uh, YouTube video of Natasha actually at Trethaway reading this poem. It's, I give the link here. If your teacher wants to stop at this point and uh, uh, watch that in class before I go on with the rest of this video, uh, feel free to do that, but I'm not gonna take time to, to play that for you. So a lot of poets say that uh, Natasha Trethaway um, modeled this um, Graveyard Blues poem after the Shakespearean sonnet. And there are certainly similarities. And so we're gonna look at both of those and, and, um, and, and see what we think about that. As you can see it right here on the slide, I think the poem is more related to the musical blues form than the sonnet form. Um, but let's take a look here. So on the left, you see one of Shakespeare's most famous sonnets, Sonnet 18. Uh, a love poem, obviously. Shall I compare these to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. And it goes on. And on the right, you can see uh, Trethaway's Graveyard Blues, obviously not a love poem. Um, and I won't get into the, um, uh, the details of the poetry because I'm not a poet, but, but if you look at it, um, you know, the, the, the sonnet has rhyming every other line and basically consists of four lines of text in three groups. And then a, a, at the end, there's two lines that you might think of that as sort of a closing section or in music, we call that a coda, where you finish something off or summarize something or conclude something. Uh, Trethaway, if we look at the Graveyard Blues, it's grouped into three lines per group or stanza, you might think of it. And notice the, um, the rhyming is um, the first two lines rhyme. And actually, they're in, in, in all cases, it's the same word. It's more than a rhyme. It's exactly the same word. And then the third line is contrasting. And again, uh, after the, the four stanzas in this case, there's a sort of that two-line two closing section. So, also notice that the first two lines of each stanza are basically variations of each other. It rained the whole time we were laying her down, and then a variation of that same idea, rained from the church to grave where we put her down. And then a contrasting idea, the suck of mud at our feet was a hollow sound. So, so it seems to be the form is make a statement, make the same statement perhaps in a slightly different wording, and then a contrasting statement, okay? So what are the blues, what are the musical blues and what, what, the, what are the blues all about? Because I'm making the claim that um, Natasha Trethaway was thinking more about the musical blues form than she was about the sonnet. Now, of course, I don't know what she was thinking, but certainly her poem follows the musical blues format or even the, uh, the lyrics of, of blues songs. And I'll show you one of those in a, in a minute here. So what are the blues? The blues are music that came out of uh, black American folk origin, uh, developed in the 19th century, uh, coming out of slavery. Um, and they're, they're really about, uh, you know, the term melancholic. We don't use that term very much 
anymore, but it's about despair. It's about sadness. It's about a feeling of helplessness. These people had very difficult lives, and the blues were a way to express that, both in the lyrics, if, they, if it had lyrics, or in music uh, of, of sadness. Many times we hear the term, you know, you've got the blues or you're in a blue mood. Uh, it means you're feeling sad or, or melancholic. So a melancholic is a fun word to look up. Um, and really the blues had a big impact on American music. Uh, became part, part of jazz, uh, gave a rise to what's called rhythm and blues, and really gave rise to rock and roll. Because if you go to somewhere like Memphis, there are entire blues clubs that play the blues continuously. And there's all kinds of blues now. But blues music is based on a um, basic chord progression. And the, the most common uh, form of that being what's called the 12-bar blues. And the format is shown at the bottom of the screen there. So I, if you're into music, you could say, oh, those are chord symbols. That means C chord, C chord, C chord, F chord, F chord, and so forth. And that's right. Um, now, I put this in C major because, as I said earlier, I, my piano skills are rather rudimentary, and this is the easiest key for me to play it in. Um, but basically, these three lines of, of chords, uh, each of those chords would last one measure. And so each of those lines is four measures long. Obviously, that's how we get the 12-bar blues. And if we, go, if we think what I just said about the, the, Natasha's poem, is we have a, a statement, those four C chords. A, a similar statement, maybe a little, uh, a little variation with the two Fs, then back to the Cs. And then a contrasting going to the G chord, the F chord, and the two, two C chords. So let me play that progression for you. I'm going to play it very simply, just one chord per measure. Um, and so you can hear the chord changes. So we're going to go about this way. One, two, three. So I just played uh, the basic 12-bar bar blues uh, progression. You have probably heard that progression thousands of times in your life because it's in, in lots of popular music. You may have not known you were listening to that, or you may know that you're listening to a blues progression. So um, as I said, that basic progression gave rise to the whole blues uh, music, and it's a really important part of American music. So now let's talk about the lyrics or the blues poetry. And we saw this in, in the poem, in Natasha's poem a few minutes ago, is there's a line of text, a repetition of that line of text, or a variation of it, and then a line of new text. And there may be several stanzas or choruses, um, this pattern. So let's look at another. It's interesting. In 1959, uh, John Lee Hooker, he's a famous blues musician, wrote um, a song called Very, Very Blues. And I'll show you the lyrics. This will work. Here we go. Uh, so the first line, you know they tell me the graveyard graveyard is a low down dirty place. The second line, you know they tell me the graveyard graveyard is a low down dirty place. And then the third line, they've taken my baby to the graveyard and they packed dirt in her face. So again, we have, actually in this case, we have an exact repetition in the first two lines and then a contrast in the third line. And you can certainly see um, the melancholy or the despair or the sadness in this poem. Let's look at one more stanza. I followed that long black wagon, long black wagon down to the graveyard. Watch them pack dirt in my baby's face. That's the first line. I followed that long black wagon to the graveyard, watching them pack dirt in my baby's face. Again, a, just a slight variation of it, a few words different. And the last line, Mr. Graveyard Digger, why you want to take my baby away? So again, you can see that pattern of a line of text, either the same line or a slight, a slight variation, and then a contrasting line. Okay, let me get back here to, um, let's see, here we go. Um, 
So uh, there is a YouTube video of uh, John Lee Hooker playing and singing this. Um, I won't take time to do that, but if your teacher is, as I said, wants to stop the video now and play that uh, for you, uh, they can do that. So let's go back a minute to Trethway's poem here. And just um, So this whole poem it is on that pattern. It rained the whole time we were laying her down, rained from church to grave when we put her down. So a statement of variation, and then a, a, the suck of mud at our feet was a hollow sound, so contrasting. Again, in the second stanza, when the preacher called out, I held up my hand. When he called out for a witness, I raised my hand. And then a contrast, death stops the body's work, the soul's a journeyman, and so forth. So you can look at this whole poem and see that she follows that blues form rather exactly. She does a little bit more variation between the first two lines, but they basically uh, say the same thing, and then a contrasting line. And then these last two lines, uh, in music we call it a coda, a finishing the octave section. And if you've ever been to a jazz concert where they uh, play the same tune over and over and improvise on it, and then they have a, a little sort of finishing off section. And in some ways, it's, it sort of sums up her feelings um, about the about the whole thing. So we'll finish this off in just a minute here. Um, so you might want to look more closely about the form of the poem, the lines, the rhyming scheme, the rhythm of the poems, uh, and the, and I mentioned the coda section. You might want to discuss, you know, why did Trethewey write this as a poem instead of narrative describing this funeral and graveyard? What feelings are evoked? Um, and you might, in class, want to try reading the poem with some blues playing in the background. We did this in the class last year. Um, so I've given a YouTube uh, link here with just some instrumental sort of slow blues that you, you can read along, you could have the, someone in the class read along. Uh, you have to be careful not going too fast. The mu music moves pretty slow, and you have to sort of listen to those chord, for those chord changes so you know when to go to the next line. And it's slower than you think. So, uh, but give it a try. If it's not perfect, you'll get the idea. And, as, and you know, obviously, Trethewey did not set this to music, although I suppose someone could. So let me uh, finish up here by saying. I hope you learned something about the blues. I hope you got, uh, gained some further insight in this wonderful poem by Natasha Trethway. It's certainly an expressive poem with a lot of emotion and uh, certainly exemplifies uh, the blues being about despair, about sadness, about feeling melancholy, um, and, and uh, really about the Black experience in America. Um, well, for, that's been for centuries, unfortunately. Um, so thanks for listening to me again. I apologize for my uh, sort of inept zooming and, uh, and rudimentary piano playing, but I hope uh, you learned something.